G'day guys and welcome to me lab. In this, our 14th episode in our Zero to Zelda, how to make an ARPG in Godot 4 tutorial series. Quite a mouthful. Now, this is our last standard full length lesson. After this, there will still be more videos with just short snippets of things that you can do to improve your game. But let's focus more on what we're doing today. So in this lesson, we are going to create a uh, start screen or an opening screen. We're gonna add music to our different scenes um, and maybe a few other little things to tidy up around the edges as well. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to try and polish off our game so it's at a level where all you really need to do is keep editing the map, maybe adding new enemies, collectibles, things like that. But you'll have all the basic structure that you need to make your basic ARPG. All right, so let's do a recap and then get into what we're up to today. I think our recap's getting a bit too long. So let's just say we've basically made a full game. We're just gonna add some finishing touches today. So what are we getting up to in this lesson? Well, we're gonna create our start screen and then we're also gonna add some different music to our different scenes. Why? Well, to add some finishing touches to our ARPG. So it's basically a bare bones um, skeleton for you to then fill in. You're going to need to be able to understand and apply how to create uh, scenes and nodes, just like in many of our other lessons. Well, by the end of this lesson, you should have a fully functional basic ARPG with a player, an enemy, um, health, death, collectibles, scene transitions, all of that. And if you've been following along and doing your May and Might sections, you should have quite a few enemies and a large detailed map as well to explore. All right, so let's jump on into Godot and get started on our start screen. So just like we did with our game over screen, we're going to start by creating a new scene and we're going to um, create the base node of that scene to be a canvas layer. So let's do that. So to create our new scene, we go up the top, we click the plus, we come over, we look for other node and we type in canvas and up comes canvas layer. Now, this time we are going to call it start screen. So rename your canvas layer node to be start screen. Let's save that as start screen not seen. Excellent. All right, so we've got that one opened up and saved. The next thing we probably wanna do is start dumping stuff in there. So we've created our canvas layer. We wanna have a button, which is gonna be our start button. So we can do that by making a child node. We click on it instead of canvas. Now we wanna search for button. There we go. Let's rename it to start. Excellent. Um, and I think what we should also do actually is click on our start screen and create our script. So remember, we want to make it from our root node. So we click on the start screen root node and we click on the create script. We want it to be called start screen and we click create and there it is for us. Now, we want to first of all signal our start button through to this script. So we click on our start button, we go over, we click on node and then on the pressed one, Let's signal it to that script. Excellent, there it is there. Okay, let's just jump back into our actual 2D view now. So we've got our button, it's still up here, looking a bit teeny tiny, and we haven't written anything in there even. So let's click on our inspector um, on our start button, and let's put the text in, which will be start, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out. Let's find where we are in relation to everything. All right, so let's reposition our start um, but oh, I think that's our, um, our little arrow pointer things for the centering. So I can rarely ever click on the right thing when I do it zoomed out like this. And we want our start button to be somewhere in the middle of all of that. Um, I should probably use some guides or something, but let's just give it a test and see what it looks like. So remember, if we want to test it without running the whole game, you click on the clapperboard one. Let's just have a quick look at where that is. Oh, it's right in the middle there, which is fine by me. All right, the next thing I want to do, though, is I want to also be able to have... Can you hear that? The kookaburras every morning. I love it. It's so awesome. But it is a bit loud when you're trying to record. Anyway, uh, the next thing we want to do is maybe throw a logo in there, right? So mostly when you open up a game for the first time, it's not just a grey screen with the word start. So the way we're going to do that, we can use a texture rect. So click back on our start screen root node, click on add child node, and we want to look for a texture rect. There we go. So that gives us a new um, set of pointer things and a new little box, and we need to add something in there. So you might want to create your own logo, or you can use the one that I've provided in, uh, in all the files there. Um, let me just find that and drag it into mine. Okay, drop that in there. If that worked, where did it go? Let me try that again. No, patience, patience, part of one. 
this time I think we're cooking with gas. All right, there we go. So we've dragged that over. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that to be our texture rex texture. So over here where we've got empty, let's just take our logo and dump it on the empty box and then it appears there. So let's position it roughly where we want it. Um, let's get our uh, pointers so we center it, but this is kind of way too big. So let's click on layout. Let's go down to transform to scale and maybe like 0.3 of that. Yeah, much smaller. And let's drag that down to be around our start button and let's do a quick inspect and see what we got. All right, so yeah, we're getting there, we're getting closer. Let's make a few more changes. Our start can come down a bit. Our bogan can come down a bit and maybe get a bit smaller too. Let's go to 0.2, oops, 0.2. Center it again. There we go, let's have a look. Ooh, let's just push our start up a tiny bit. Look, I know I'm doing this very fiddly and there's probably much better ways of doing it, but for what we're trying to do here, this is fine. So there we go, I'm happy with that. All right, so now we need to have a work on the script. Let me save that so I don't ruin anything. We wanna to go to our start screen script. So let's click on our script um, and then let's find our way to that function that we just signaled. So function on start press, this is the one we wanna um, add some gear to. So if you remember from our last lesson when we were doing the end scene, this is done exactly the same way, right? So we're gonna paste in this here, get tree, change scene to file world.scene. So we're just saying we press on start, it starts the world scene from the beginning, which is exactly what we want. We don't need to play with any of those other things. So let's save that. Um, now, there is one more thing we need to do, and that is if you remember all the way back to our first lesson, when you um, first test your game, it asks you, you know, what you want the, the main scene to be. So the scene that gets automatically loaded. So if we want to have a start screen, we need that main first scene to be the start screen. So we need to go to our project and our project settings. All right, now we need to go to our run, which up application run, and then you'll see here main scene is world.scene. Well, we wanna change that now to our brand new scene. I'm probably gonna get some spinning pinwheels of death. I seem to whenever I try and do anything um, in the file, in the project settings for some reason. All right, so we've just created our new one called start scene. Um, click on that, click on open. Um, and that'll save that. I'm gonna end this video here and um, I'll see you in the next one. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so I've changed that in the project settings. Uh, the pinwheel of death has finally vanished on my computer and now we can actually test it. So let's make sure everything's saved and let's head up and hit our play button. So we should go straight into that. Yep, brilliant. And we should be able to click on this and go to our first scene. We should still have our scene transitions, yes. Let's, uh, no, let's not grab that. Let's uh, just go and let some magpies have their way with us. Um, attack, 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 and dead, and to our game over scene. So this is a bit out of skew if, and, and there's a few reasons for that, right? So it's to do with window sizes and all of that. I don't want to get um, bogged down in trying to, because everyone's going to have a slightly different size monitor and all these things as well. So tweak with these things as much as you like it doesn't really matter at the end of the day all i'm trying to do is give you broad brush strokes remember so i can now click quit it'll quit out of that game now the next thing we're going to do is add some music okay so music time it's finally time to get a little bit of audio into our game so it's not quite so boring this is actually surprisingly easy all right so we what i want to do is have a different sound for each different scene that we have and we've got what we've got our main game we've got our cave we've got our game over and we've got our start i think our start now main game could be the same music that makes sense that's normally how we go but our cave can have slightly different music to sort of set the scene that it's different and then our game over scene can also have slightly different music and all we really need to do is make sure we've got um, the mp3 files that we need and then we just set up an audio stream player so first things first is let's copy in some of those files and they're um, either showing there on your OneNote or they're in the github or whatever so just find the ones you need but we're going to use um, main game.mp3 we're going to use uh, cave.mp3 and gameover.mp3. So those are the three files that I wanna use. So I'm gonna click up on our um, start screen up here. We're gonna click add a child node and we want an audio stream player 2D. We're gonna create that. And you'll see we've got an empty box over there on our stream in our inspector. So for this one, our start screen, I wanna use our main um, audio file. 
where's that one there main game.mp3 i'm just going to drag that over to that empty stream spot that adds it in there we want to just have a quick look at our settings to make sure it's all okay um, let's go autoplay on now let's test that scene and see if it works so it does all right let's close that okay fantastic so that's it and you just do that in each of the others so let's go to our game over scene let's add an audio stream player and then let's give it the game over mp3 let's test it oh why didn't that work because we didn't click on autoplay on right so it's important that we follow all the steps that i've already somehow forgotten play that again there we go different music for that and where else do we want to do that to oh, our main scene so world world add audio stream player we want to use the main game one for that drop it in there remember to click on autoplay and we also want to do that for our cave scene too so cave audio stream player and then we drag in our cave music there it is there click on autoplay and test it it's a bit more cavey isn't it a bit more a bit more spooky all right there we go. So we've now added music. We've added a, an end scene, a start scene. We've got buttons. We've got textures. We've got all sorts of things going on. So that's the end of our very, very bare bones basic Zero to Zelda series. I am going to keep doing some extra videos just for those of you that have extra time to do a bit more on your game. Um, but yeah, they're not a core part of this course. So if you want to keep um, keep on going and learning new and new things, you know, keep looking at the other videos. Um, if you're content with where you're up to here, you've learned the bare basics that you wanted to learn, fantastic. Just spend some time modifying your game and making it unique to you. All right, let's uh, do our must, may, might, and then we'll wrap it all up. Our must, may, might for this lesson, well, you must get that start screen and music stuff sorted out. You may want to keep working on your game, right? Whatever part you think is maybe the worst, spend some time working on that. Have a think about how you can improve it. And what you might like to do is check the documentation and see if you could work out how you would add an animation, uh, sorry, a, an audio file as a sound effect. And that's something we might do in one of our little snippets later on, but it won't be in this lesson. So you might try and figure it out before me. Before we wrap it up, why don't we just do one last full test of the game. So let's click on our play button. It's gonna take us into our start scene. We'll click on start. Let's go. Oh, we're getting into a fight with a magpie. No, there's only one way to save that from happening. Let's get our funky fire stick. And now there are no magpies to atta attack us, all right? So, oh, we can still force our way into their attack zones and get hit if we're in there long enough, but that's all right. So that's it. That is the basics of our game. You can then go through and add it. Let me stop this. It's too loud. You can go through and add whatever you want to from here on out. But that's our game. It works. We, we got a start point. We got an end point. We got death. We got health bars. We got transitions. We got collectibles. There's so much going on in there. I, I think you've got all the skills you need now to make a really basic, complete, top-down ARPG. And that's it. We are done with our main lessons. We're still going to have some more, like I said, but our main stuff is done. So we have uh, created our game now to a point where you can play it. You can play the game and enjoy it. Um, if you've been doing the May and the Might, it should be really enjoyable. If you haven't, less so. So spend some more time on it if you want it to be more enjoyable. And I want to remind you as you do that of um, those three key things that we talked about at the start, right? So we talked about non-linear progression, so allowing our um, player to explore a little bit, go their own way. We talked about gating, so preventing them from moving to the end until they've done a few extra things like gotten weapons or whatever. And also can, um, trying to keep having that childlike sense of adventure. So make sure it's something that draws the player on, that is curious about what's around the next corner as you're designing and upgrading the whole thing. Right. Next time there will be a series of short specific shoots on topics like knockback, modulation, sound effects and things like that. And if there's something in particular you would like to um, see done, why don't you uh, leave a comment so then I know that it's something that people are interested in. And the last quote for our series will be this one from George Bernard Shaw. And it is, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.